Hey everyone, it's Sarah and welcome back to this pregnancy vlog series. So in this video, I want to talk about five mistakes that I made during my previous labor that I want to avoid with this baby. Mistake number one that I made dealt with the epidural and the positioning once you have the epidural. Now I know not everyone wants an epidural and that's fine, but if you do decide to get an epidural, one thing you want to remember is that you wanna change positions while the epidural is in because this helps prevent getting that medication concentrated on one side. Because what happened to me during my first birth was that I had the epidural, everything was fine, the nurse put me on the left side, and I really didn't alternate sides, and I noticed that my left side became really numb, and my right side wore off, I could move my right side and I could feel everything on that side. And I wasn't really told to change positions. So whenever I talked with the CRNA, this time during my consult, he told me that think of your body as the table and your table and the medication is like a marble. So any way you turn and stay on that side, that's where the medication is going to concentrate. So you wanna make sure that about every 45 minutes or so that you're alternating from your left to right side to keep that medication equal. Second mistake I made during my first labor was that I did not use a peanut ball while I had an epidural. And whenever I had my first birth, peanut balls were really not something that was a big deal. Um, I don't even think they had them available at the time at the hospital I was delivering, but now we're almost like, what, six, seven years later and I have done the research and a lot of people report that the peanut ball plus some studies that it shortens labor and it makes the pushing a lot easier. So I'm definitely going to implement the peanut ball this time and I've researched a lot of different positioning. If you get on you can find um, a lot of labor and delivery nurses sharing their experiences with their patients who use the peanut ball and what positions you can use. So I'm definitely gonna be doing that. And another thing that sort of ties in with that is that before I get the epidural, I'm gonna make sure that I am not just staying in bed laboring because you need to get up, you need to move, you need to walk, you need to help baby get down there in that pelvis. And that's one thing that that peanut ball does, by the way, is that it helps that baby get down in that pelvis so you can deliver. The third mistake I made during my first labor was that I didn't really consume any liquids or anything during that whole process. And I was in labor for about 18 to 20 hours, give or take. And I didn't consume anything until the very end, until I was about to push. It was like some flavored ice and it really helped me out because if I didn't have that sugar prior to that, I don't know if I would have been able to to have the energy to get through that pushing phase of labor. So ask what you can have because it really varies, I guess, on the facilities protocol or whatever the physician's allowing you to have. But a lot of times women can have um, clear liquids like chicken broth, Gatorade, popsicles, jello, things like that. And you really need that, those calories, that sugar, electrolytes to help you get through that whole process. So definitely this time, I'm not gonna make that mistake. The fourth mistake I made during my first labor was that I really did not push effectively and really know at first how to push properly. So if this is your first time having a baby, really get on and research and practice how to push effectively during that phase. Because some women, they push like 15, 30 minutes. Some women, if it's your first time, you may have to push an hour or two. And my baby was really big. He was like nine pounds, one ounce. And I ended up pushing, it seems like for about two hours. And I think it would have been a lot shorter if I had researched and practiced how to push. Because during the pushing phase, my husband was there, you know, holding my leg and he would see the baby like coming out. And like he would notice that when I pushed a certain way, the baby would actually come out more compared to another way. And the other way I was pushing was just a mess and it was wasting energy and it wasn't being effective. So I followed what he said and we had the baby out within like the next 10 to 15 minutes. So it was very helpful, so always research that. And then my fifth mistake in regards to my first labor, which more deals with the postpartum period, it was about breastfeeding. So prior before having a baby, I wasn't really around women who breastfed and I wasn't 
totally familiar with the whole process. You really don't know until you go through it yourself what it entails. So this is really advice for first time moms that I just wanna encourage you because breastfeeding, it takes work. It seems like something that's super like natural and baby's gonna come out, latch immediately and it's all gonna go well. But that does happen for some women, but for some women, their babies have to learn how to latch. You have to work with the baby. You gotta get used to putting a baby on the breast and getting used to that whole process of how it works. And I wasn't familiar with that. And plus my baby, he had a latching issue. He didn't wanna suck properly. So I had to, during that first week, to make sure my milk supply was going to come in and everything was gonna work properly, I had to learn how to use a manual pump. Like the schedule you follow with that, all the parts that are included with that, using the cream that goes on your nipples and keeping those protected. And I had to learn all that within a week and I really wish I would have researched that prior so I wouldn't have had so much to learn along with taking care of a newborn baby. But we were able to get everything figured out and it was fine. So with this baby, I definitely researched breastfeeding a lot more and have backup plans for in case things go wrong. Okay, so that wraps up the five mistakes I made during my first labor that I hope to avoid with this labor. I hope it helps you out. And um, if you're pregnant or know someone who's pregnant, be sure to check out the other videos I have in this pregnancy vlog series. And thank you so much for watching.